or smoothies. Okay. My dog only eats melons and cherries. So that's apparently what the dog likes to eat. Refuses most other fruit, but when I put it in a smoothie, she loves it. Is this an acceptable way to get her to eat fruit? Well, the problem with smoothies um, is that old surface area thing that I was explaining to you guys a few weeks ago about like if you just put an apple or a banana on your counter, this is just like a visual, right? For you to kind of imagine what the problem is. You can just put a banana down on your counter, visualize that. And then instead of that, put the apple and the banana in a blender together and blend it all up and then pour the contents out on your counter. And you will see what you've done is you've greatly exponentially increased the surface area of the food. And that's not a problem, right? Except that air is now getting to those molecules that otherwise would not be getting to it. And that process of decomposition begins outside the body instead of that happening inside the body. And if it happens outside the body, then the nutrients, those molecules become changed. And if they're changed enough, then the body won't be able to use them. So, um, so that's a problem, it's called oxidation. And um, lots of people talk about that, um, the oxidation problem with making smoothies. Uh, because people are always talking about whether juices are better than smoothies. And there's that whole blended versus juicing debate um, going on. Um, but that's the problem. So um, what's, the, what's the benefit? The benefit is the owner will be able to get the dog to eat fruit when the dog might not otherwise eat fruit at all. Um, I remember when my mom was having trouble with my getting my getting their dogs um, to eat their dog to eat um, apples. She started blending them or um, pureeing them uh, with banana, and the dog would love that. I mean, he just ate it right up. So, and the dog never vomited. He never seemed to have problems um, pooping when she did that. So it didn't seem to present any problems. Um, so there's, all, you know, there's always trade-offs, costs and benefits. The cost is the food is degraded to some level that we don't really know, we can't really quantify. And the, the benefit is your dog eats fruit. Now I wouldn't continue to feed smoothies to the dog perpetually and indefinitely. I would, um, you know, before too long, I would start offering and periodically I would do this. I would start offering whole food whole fruit to the dog and make sure that they still don't want to eat it because sometimes it's just like it's just unfamiliar right it's odd that a dog would only eat melons and cherries because there's those are like on two opposite ends of the spectrum as far as denseness goes melons are very non-dense and cherries are very dense and there's lots of fruit between there that would be sweet and good so it's kind of inexplicable how some dogs can prefer some fruits to others. Um, and cherries are kind of a pain to feed dogs because you have to de-seed them. I mean, you don't have to, but uh, most people do because um, they don't like um, seeds coming out in the poop, but it's totally fine. Unless you have a really small dog, you wouldn't want to, you know, a little, like a little tiny dog, you wouldn't want to give a cherry to because the pit can be a problem passing or even swallowing. So um, anyway, that should answer the question about smoothies. 